fresh light of midday, it's easy to think of gardening as a daytime activity. But plants don't put down tools when we do. With careful planning, it's easy to bring your garden to life at night, adding extra dimensions for nocturnal pollinators and night owls like me, so we can enjoy the garden day in, day out. Plants pollinated by butterflies and bees are at their brightest and most fragrant during the day because that's when these pollinators are most active. But not all plants are pollinated by bees and butterflies. Some are pollinated by nocturnal creatures like moths, bats and beetles. And these plants have to look and smell their best in the dark. Stephanotis, or the Madagascan jasmine, is a wonderful evergreen climber. It produces bunches of perfumed white flowers and it has glossy green foliage. Now, traditionally, it was used in wedding bouquets and it is reputed to have the best perfume of any climber. It's cold and frost tender and even in Adelaide, it does best in a protected position with a wall to give it radiant heat. But up here in the frosty hills, I definitely have to keep it undercover in the poly house. Stephanotis is related to Hoya and it's non-toxic to pets. So if you don't have a frost-free warm position outside, you could even try it inside as a valuable addition to your indoor plants. This Chilean jasmine, or Mandevilla lacta, isn't a true jasmine. It's a woody stem climber with these exquisite flowers that have a sweet vanilla scent most prominent in the evenings. Unlike other mandevillas, which are subtropical plants, this one's actually cold tolerant and it will even grow on the frosty Adelaide Hills. In my cold climate, it's deciduous, but in a milder climate, it's semi-evergreen. It has these fresh green leaves and beautiful creamy white flowers with a deliciously sweet scent. Growing in amongst the Chilean jasmine is Chinese star jasmine. Again, it's not a true jasmine, but these two white scented climbers certainly pack a fragrant punch by my front door. Chinese star jasmine is such a versatile climber. It can be grown over a topiary frame, on a trellis, even as a ground cover. And if you've got enough light, it can even be grown inside. The small white flowers are star-shaped, hence its name. And both of these climbers are members of the frangipani family. Some plants don't put on a perfume, but they do respond to the fading of the light. In the plant world, it's called a nictinastic rhythm, a bit like a circadian rhythm for plants. Typically, night flowering plants have white flowers, and that's no accident. White petals have the best chance of reflecting light, so nocturnal pollinators can find the flowers in the dark. And insects that don't see that well in the dark can be attracted by fragrance. And it's not just ornamentals that are in the night scene. Productive plants like my New Guinea bean or Cucusa are also night scented. It's in the bottle gourd family and it produces these long fruits with a flesh that's white, similar to a cross between zucchini and cucumber. Large white flowers open at night and emit a sweet fragrance to attract its nighttime pollinator. It's a hawk moth. So this plant not only looks and smells good, it tastes good too. Because plants like gardenias attract nighttime pollinators and they rely on a fragrance to get their attention, a chemical change must occur. When the temperature drops in the evening, it triggers volatile compounds in the petals of the flower to become highly concentrated. And that means that the flower becomes more fragrant. I'm going to show you how to take advantage of these night-scented treasures by creating your own pot full of night-scented plants. You'll need a large pot with good drainage holes and good quality potting soil. For this project, because one of the plants prefers acid soil, I'm using potting media suitable for acid-loving plants. This is Gardenia Florida with those classic creamy white heavenly scented blooms. I can't wait till this one's in flower. With the gardenia in the centre of the pot, I'm going to backfill around it. The first plant I'm going to use is a ground cover form of star jasmine. It's Trachylospernum asiaticum flat mat. And it'll be perfect for hanging over the edges of the pot. 
It has dark green foliage and a crisp white starry shaped flower with a heavenly perfume. And to fill in the gaps, I'm going to use the alyssum, which is Sweet Alice. It's called Sweet Alice for a reason. It's only an annual, but it should self-seed. It's best to make these mix pots in situ so you don't have to move them when they're heavy. These plants will love it here in this sheltered sun trap. But as the weather starts to get cool and we head towards winter, I'm going to move the whole pot down to my poly house because gardenias are frost tender. Gardens aren't just for early birds. Gardens can be actively enjoyed by bright night owls as well. After a hard day's work in the garden, there's nothing better than a spot to sit in, admire and just breathe it all in.